In this video, I'm going to teach you the tips and tricks to my favorite technique, dry brushing. In my opinion, dry brushing is one of the best techniques in tabletop wargame hobby painting. The ability to make it look as if you've gone through and put all kinds of extra detail into your model and really what you did is just sort of scrubbed around a little bit with the brush. That's something that um, people who don't understand the hobby, people who are not in the hobby, they look at it and they go, I don't know how you painted all the little tiny like loops of that chain mail hanging off of that guy's you know butt or whatever. And, uh, and, and you can say, you know, if you want to, you can be like, oh, well, it took me a long time. I had to paint every single loop with a brush that was only, you know, three pieces of hair. Or you could just be like, yeah, it's a technique and it's actually quite simple. So what is dry brushing? Webster's Dictionary defines it as... I have no idea because I didn't actually look it up. But basically what it is, is taking a brush, putting a little bit of paint on it, and then brushing most of it off onto a piece of, you know, paper towel or something like that. And then when there's very, very, very little paint left, then you start brushing it sometimes back and forth, sometimes just one direction against your model. And the reason you do that is because the raised parts of the model will then pick up that very minuscule piece of or extra little bit of paint that's still left on the brush, but it won't get, hopefully, all over the model, only in the raised parts. What this can do is it's kind of like the reverse of a wash. A wash is a fluid that you put onto the model that gets into the nooks and crannies and makes the dark parts, the parts that should be dark, darker. Whereas this is the opposite. This hits just the raised areas and it is gonna hopefully make them look highlighted. Now the trick is, is that one is a fluid which is like, you know, wet. And then this is the dry brush, which is dry. So you can kind of see how that works out. Now, don't let anybody tell you that you have to use specific dry brush brushes to do this technique. I do frequently still use old grungy brushes that just don't come to a point anymore. And they're all fuzzy looking. And those are almost like the perfect ones. You don't want to start with a good brush. Dry brushing with a good brush that you're then going to try to get into a point again and do like, you know, detail work. That's not a good plan. You want to keep the brushes that are damaged and messed up uh, and hold on to them. And then they become your dry brushes. But on the other hand, there's plenty of companies out there that make specific dry brushes, which actually a lot of them I do kind of like. Some of them have like a, a chiseled tip to them. Some of them have longer bristles. Some of them are even almost like a stippling brush where it's round. It kind of depends on what you're looking for. But I do generally these days kind of play more with the, the ones that are designed for it. But you don't have to. Just hold on to your old brushes when they get all furry and nasty. And then they become your dry brushes. So generally, how do you dry brush? That's the question. Well, you take your model and then you, you've got one of two ways to do it. Sometimes you want to use a color and brush back and forth, up and down. So if you see here, if I can get them in the shot, um, if I was to go up and down, back and forth, I would hit both sides of the raised parts of his little army coat here and all that kind of stuff. And sometimes you want that because you're trying to make something that's a little bit more akin to edge highlighting, which is a fancy person's version of dry brush where you're trying to actually kind of catch every last little kind of fold and edge manually as opposed to automatically when you go up and down. Maybe that's not the right term, but let's just go with it. However, sometimes you want to only brush one direction. And the reason you would do that is so that you're trying to kind of make it look as if the light is hitting the model from above. I did a video quite some time ago about painting light onto your model, pachow. And in that, I kind of talk a little bit about, you know, the light comes from above in most situations. And so therefore we kind of paint as if the light is hitting the bottom. You know, so you put lighter paints on the top and then darker paints underneath and you do all that. With dry brushing, when you're only going one direction, you're doing kind of that same thing, but it's not a necessity in all situations. So which paints would you use for dry brushing? You can use your normal paints and there are companies that make special dry paints, but you don't have to use those. If a paint is really, 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 really liquid, I would probably not try to dry brush it right away. I would maybe let it sit out a little bit so it starts to get a little bit drier, a little bit like tackier, stickier, and then use it. Um, I wouldn't necessarily, but it's up to you. I don't generally put my paints that I'm going to use for dry brushing into my wet palette because the wet palette makes them wetter. 
which is great for normal layering, but you don't want that for dry brushing. So in this situation, I usually stick it like on a piece of plastic. Like here, you can see I've got just a piece of garbage plastic that I found in literally the garbage, and I'm using it as a little palette for my colors. This kind of stuff can, letting it set up just a little bit if it's really fluid is you know not a bad idea. If you're dipping into a paint pot like a Citadel, or a P3 from Privateer Press, you probably don't need to go and transfer it. You can probably go straight from the pot and then directly to the paper towel. The paper towel is actually the really important part. All right, so step one, we take our dry brush and we dab a little bit and get it on there. And then we take it and we go to town and we try to get as much of it off as possible, kind of back and forth, back and forth, not in focus anywhere, maybe here. And you basically are just trying to get it so there's almost barely any left on there. And then you take your model, and then you just start going back and forth. Now, it's a subtle thing, especially in this situation, since I'm using a gray primed model and I'm using a gray, um, you know, uh, dry brush. But sometimes you want that extra layer. You want that extra kind of um, just difference. In some situations, you might do a wash first, like a dark wash over this gray, and then decide to go and do a little bit uh, after that dries completely, then start doing your dry brush. But it depends. There's a lot of things you can do. And you can see I'm kind of being fast and loose with it. I'm just going back and forth, scrubba scrubba, and that's pretty much about it. That's what makes dry brushing a lot of fun and a great technique to add more detail, a little bit more contrast to your models. So now the question is, well, what color paint should I use for dry brushing? In most situations, you use a lighter color than the color you're going over. And when I mentioned before the whole chainmail thing, generally you want to paint the chainmail area black and get as much of the black into the little nooks and crannies of the chainmail as possible, let it completely dry, and then dry brush maybe silver, maybe brass, depends on what you want your metal to look like. In this situation, again, I've got this gray army guy, and I am going to, in the last one I used gray on the gray. It was a slightly lighter gray over a darker gray, so it's subtle, but sometimes you don't want to be subtle. Sometimes you go, and you grab some white, and then you brush it off and get most of it off, and then you start going to town. And then you're gonna to start to see some definite change to uh, the tone. You're gonna, in some situations, you can use the dry brushes even less than just a highlight, but more as the color. Uh, in the orcs that I did recently on the Hobby Progress vlog, their armor, was initially just all prime black, and then I did the silver dry brush to bring up that color. So it looks like it was painted silver and then darkened down, but what I actually did was I started it black and I silvered it up with silver dry brushing. You do the same type of thing with Necrons, uh, a lot of different types of models, dry brushing can really help. So again, you're taking a little bit and you're brushing it off. Here on the white paper, you can't really see that I'm getting it off, but it's coming off. And then you just kind of go back and forth and you get the detail that you want. And it might look a little weird, but it does work out. Wow, this guy's a little wrist, his little, he, huh. he has a waist and it spins. These are um, dust models from back in the Dust Tactics day. I had no idea their little wrist, their little waists would spin. That's spectacular. Anyway, um, so uh, again, just adding some detail and bringing some of that contrast out to where you can really find something that's going to help your model, uh, I hate to say pop, but stand out, pop, frankly, a little bit more on the table. And so remember, using any kind of brushes like this, whether it's your, you know, purpose-built dry brushes made by, say, Army Painter that I've got here in some Citadel, um, or it's just a brush that you've beat to heck and had for a long time, and now it decides to retire into, you know, being a dry brush. Or even, there are brushes out there, there are um, makeup brushes that are made by a company called ELF that uh, Terry Latorco from That Terry Girl, her YouTube channel, she swears by them for dry brushing and you can get them at like Walmart and places like that. She's a big fan. Her links are down in below, but it, it's, it doesn't have to be a, a specific type of paintbrush. I like those because they frequently have a chisel so you can kind of get them into places you want, but any kind of brush um, even art store brushes, real cheap ones, will work great for dry brushing. Dry brushing is also super important in terrain. 
pretty much if you're going to do any kind of rocks, if you're going to do any kind of bricks, if you're going to do any of that kind of stuff, you're going to be dry brushing it. First go with a dark color to paint the actual thing, prime it or whatever, base coat it, and then a lighter color to dry brush. And that's what makes terrain really stand out and work quickly. And dry brushing with a big brush, not something this small, but a bigger brush, not a house brush, but you know, you can really get through a lot of terrain very quickly with a good wide, maybe an inch wide brush and uh, really go to town to make your terrain look a lot better and make it look like you took a lot of time to paint all that detail in there. So if you've never dry brushed before because you've just kind of started in this hobby, definitely get it into your arsenal as soon as you can. Really start to figure out how to do it. It's really easy. Um, you can just test it on some whatever kind of models. Again, find some army men or whatever, not necessarily these guys, but some sort of army men, prime them like a dark color and just start dry brushing. Or just jump in and start working on your next project and start doing some dry brushing. Or work on some terrain. You could do that too because worst comes to worst, you just prime it again real quick and start over. Dry brushing, it's easier to have too little paint on the brush than it is to have too much. So make sure you get as much of it off as possible on your paper towel or whatever and get it off of there and then start brushing. And if it doesn't really look like you did much, well, then you can do it again. But it's kind of hard to go if you back the other direction if you didn't brush off enough. Dry brushing is one of the standards. I do not believe that it is cheating. I don't believe it is a beginner technique that you should get rid of down the road, especially if you're trying to get stuff on the tabletop. If you dry brushed your entry for the Golden Demon or the Crystal Brush or something like that, well, okay, maybe that's a different story because at that point you're probably going to be getting into edge highlighting. But for stuff that you are trying to get on the tabletop, dry brushing is mwah. 